Do you know there are actual slave owners sitting on the UN Human Rights Council? You probably don't. The media hasn't covered it. But on October 17, 2019, the UN Human Rights Council elected several new members. Mauritania in Northwest Africa was one of them. Why should anybody care about this? Well, for one thing, in Mauritania, almost one in five people are slaves, real slaves, chattel slaves, people who are the wholly owned property of their masters. Upon their master's death, they are passed down to his wives and children, just like the rest of his property. Not only that, 100% of these slaves are black. You'd think you would have heard about blacks being enslaved in 2019, but you haven't. Perhaps because the world's elites just don't think that Arab Muslims owning black slaves is a good thing for people to notice. Mauritania's population is about 30% Arab Berber and 70% black African. It's an apartheid state. The Arab Berber minority wields all the political power. The black African majority is despised, dejected, disenfranchised, and destitute. When the Arabs conquered Mauritania in the 8th century, they converted the indigenous Africans to Islam. And ever since, the Arab conquerors have owned blacks as slaves, even though Islam forbids Muslims from enslaving fellow Muslims. But here, as in the West, anti-black racism trumps religious doctrine. Due to Western pressure, slavery has been officially banned five times since Mauritania gained independence from France in 1960. But, not surprisingly, none of this legislation has had much effect. In 2011, a CNN investigation estimated that between 340,000 and 680,000 black men, women, and children in Mauritania are still owned as slaves by Arab masters. That's between 10 and 20 percent of the entire country. These legal bans brought an end to all public auction blocks in Mauritania. Instead, slaves today change hands quietly in individual sales. They're given as wedding gifts, they're used as currency to pay gambling debts, they can even be rented out. They're also tortured. In 1990, Human Rights Watch reported on tortures inflicted on slaves whose masters deemed them as recalcitrant or lazy. Regarding the so-called camel treatment, the report says, quote, the slave's legs are tied to the sides of a camel who has been deliberately denied water for up to two weeks. The camel is taken to drink, and as the camel's stomach expands, the slave's legs, thighs, and groin are slowly dislocated. In the insect treatment, a slave who displeases his master would have desert insects inserted into his ears, which would then be blocked with stones. A cloth would be fastened tightly around his head to keep the stones and bugs sealed in place. His hands would be tied behind his back, and he would be left in the hot sun for days. The insects trapped inside his ears would cause him to go insane. Why then is this country on the UN Human Rights Council? After all, it could be said that Mauritania is only marginally worse than Libya, Nigeria, Pakistan, Sudan, and Venezuela, tyrannical states now also on the Human Rights Council. Western nations actually debated whether they should abandon the Council as a farce, but they decided, in their infinite foolishness, to stay, thinking that the world's despotic tyrannies, just by being in the company of civilized nations, might somehow change their ways and become more like us. But just the opposite has occurred. Now it is the civilized West which refuses to object to, or even to talk about, the enslavement of blacks by Arabs, in a country that sits right at their side on the UN Human Rights Council. Western nations, by their silence, have become accomplices to slavery. The tyrannies have not become like us, but we've become like them. For shame. If you want to learn more about the enslavement of blacks in predominantly Arab Muslim countries, and if you want to understand why the West's so-called human rights organizations keep this under wraps, 
go to www.iabolish.org. For Americans for Peace and Tolerance and the American Anti-Slavery Group, this is Charles Jacobs.